you immediately notice, like all, all the other 26.4x terminals, the very wide aspect ratio, uh, which makes it so special. This one is written with the large, uh, large font set. That is, of course, the Schrodinger equation. I have put some data on the data tape here. It reads it and fills it all up. So a pretty expensive terminal, but no, it can do a lot of things. And no, I haven't uh, hooked up to a computer yet. Okay, time to uh, connect something to my terminal. And I took out the communications card, that's the, the serial card, to uh, configure it. And the first difficulty I hit is to figure out which one I have. Because apparently they are, at least on that manual, four of them. The standard one, they call it standard asynchronous, extended asynchronous, asynchronous multipoint, and synchronous multipoint. So the two first one are standard RS-232, the two last one are IBM BiSync, so you can share a line between many terminals. So, uh, this one says GP Async, which is none of the one mentioned. It had a number that wasn't mentioned, 6007. Uh, however, uh, looking further, I had an extra one, and it looks exactly the same. And that one says it's a 02640-60143. So, it appears... Appears I have a later model of the extended asynchronous communication. So I think I have uh, looked out, I have the better card. And it has a million uh, configurations. See, this is from the keyboard interface because not on half the options are on the keyboard card, which I have here. See, they are the juicy ones. Uh, and the other half of the options, so that's still the keyboard one, so that's all these. And uh, well, it's still the keyboard one. And then you have the, the ones for here. And you, you can do custom baud rates, you can split the baud rates between transmit and receive. You can also use that one, configure it so it's, it talks to a printer, a, a whole bunch of things. My favorite feature is when you strap it to use the settings on the keyboard. And this is this little door here. Actually, most keyboards don't have the door anymore, but mine does. You can actually select the baud rate right here from 110 to 9600. You can do half duplex, full duplex, even odd, non, so no need for any menus. You can, uh, you just can toggle through them and you know, figure out which one is the right setting. Uh, and then, just for completeness, there are two types of these guys. Is this one, which is obviously this guy, and the IBM BiSync multipoint should look different. It should look like this. Uh, and I actually looked if I had one of those and in my one of my spare keyboards This is a, a keyboard for parts of you see is in pretty bad shape uh, but it has this special Rates high low and it has weird rates 1800 1200 675 50 no <laughs> Typical IBM stuff nobody uses that then my next problem is to get a cable that works with it and I thought I would have to make it uh, to make one of on my own but it turns out I have something that's close enough and yep, that would work and it says on it so US modem so this is not exactly what I need this is the modem one it has a mail plug uh, but that's when I reach out for my box of RS-232 cables and I have one of each kind. So I have my little tool here which allows me to figure out what I have. So you plug one end over here and the other end over there. And then it basically tells you what connects to what. So pin 1 of this side is connected to pin 4 of this side. 2 to 2, 3 to 3, so this is a straight through. 
4 to 5 and 6. So this is some kind of hardware handshake that's connected really 5 to 7, 6, 8 and 20 are together. So go figure. Um, so I think this one is the right one. I looked the pin out. I looked it up. So I'll just do this and uh, hopefully you can connect to a computer, except I probably need one of these, which is the 223 inversion. Uh, so that would be like this. So TX is connected to RX and RX to TX. Uh, either with or without that, that should work. And then we'll figure a hardware handshake later when I connect it to something real slow. Actually, the first thing might be to do a comms test and uh, just because I can't do it, I got that uh, little test plug in my bunch of goodies and it's supposed to enable you to self-test the car. I suspect it's some kind of a loop back. Okay, auth and transmit mode, remote on I suppose. Enter. Basic data com. Okay, self test. Okay, all right. So he likes it. If I remove the plug, he probably won't like it either. Remove the plug. Green. Enter. And it has an error. Okay, so it seems to be talking to the board. Load of cable. Goes up to the Dolch and let's change board rate 9600, full duplex, no parity. Okay, and return, and I'll reset. Okay, it's not coming up on my terminal here. Let me try to remove the 223 inversion. So that works better. No. Oh, yeah, yeah, I think it works. There you go. Okay, we're talking. And on this side. There we go, we are talking. All right, I can communicate. Excellent. By the way, this is DOS running Kermit. Okay, now that we have it connecting to something, I uh, can answer a question that a uh, smart guy asked in the previous video, is can you use it for connecting to Linux as an intelligent console? And it turns out my doll here, which I've seen mostly booting in Windows 98, 98 DOS actually, uh, it can also do Windows XP and I have a little Linux here uh, which is CrunchBank which amazingly fits in this uh, 256 megabyte machine and works quite well so we're going to launch that so here we go CrunchBank which is actually a light version of Debian really well made it's amazing how little memory it uses so here we go simplified version of linux so let's call up a terminal here we go and let's uh launch a uh, terminal on port one so the magic spell here is uh alternate get tty uh, so that's to get the login shell, I can't remember what dash L does, 4800, that's the speed. If I try 9600, the, the poor terminal cannot, it loses characters too fast. Uh, TTYS0, that's uh, the, the, the COM1 serial port, and that's the magic uh, incantation for the HP terminal. It has an HP 2645 definition in the term info. And as soon as I do that, it should spawn something over here. Uh, oh, asks me for my pseudo password. Here we go. 
There we go, and we have the login prompt for Unix. Yee so let's log in. And blah 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 blah. Here is Unix. Uh, so let's see how it works on this console. Let's do a list ls. And the first thing you notice, it doesn't work that well. It adds other characters because it's trying to do color uh, by default. So I have to do an alias ls because it's actually ls dash dash color. And try ls again. Now it's clean. Uh, so let's go to my document. Actually, let's, yeah, documents folder and uh, oops. there you go has auto completion all that works and let's launch a uh, intelligent terminal program nano which uses n curses um, and I think I have an ins my install file there you go and bloop here you go, here you have it, you have a little text editor and the arrows work as uh, advertised. I can cut and paste, what is that? Control K to cut and we'll paste it here. There we go. Uh, and uh, so it, it just behaves the way it should. Um, yeah, you can do previous page, the next page. So all the all the special keys on the keyboard they seem to be doing fine. And um, what was it again to do? the cursor escape cursor there you go constant cursor position display so that's the one hang up is that now if I move the cursor it has trouble with the highlight for some reason it gets it sometimes right sometimes wrong and so I guess there is a slight problem in the HP 2645 handling in N curses. Um, I don't know that I would submit a bug report. <laughs> Nobody will ever fix that one, nor can ever uh, can ever check it or test it. Let's exit. Control X. No, I don't want to save this. And uh, somebody else asked if I could play a uh, NetHack, which I had to look up, and it's actually a pretty neat ASCII game that dates back from a far long time ago. Uh, so NetHack, and shall I pick a character's race role, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so let's, let's choose a character uh, for us. And uh, it is written in the boot of Kamax Tlee that after creation the cruel god Moloch rebelled against the authority, blah blah blah. So it's a dungeon and dragon thing with an ASCII interface. So it's kind of a great adventure game, uh, but with a little bit of a graphics background and it's said to be very good and very deep. And here we go, we have the still the original graphics here. Uh, and I am in a chamber, I'm um, the little at sign. Uh, F, I think, is my pet, and those things are doors or things like that. So you go explore. Uh, one thing I need to do is to enable the numbers uh, keypad here to move faster, and that's not enabled by default. So here we go. It's one of the later options I think it's all the way at the end number pad G G and then I choose to turn it on with B there you go and now I should be able to move with a keypad yes I am so if you 
look at this. I can move around and my pet follows me. The only problem is that we have again this uh, issue here where the invert thing is not following so I think it's really end curses but it's trying to do colors it's interesting color is represented by inverted video and half gray video well, that's pretty neat it gets sort of messy after the highlights are not uh, done correctly so you have to do shift control R to redraw uh, but it's perfectly playable you can play a net hack uh, with against this uh, highlight bug uh, which I don't know if it's net hack or end curses you are a lawful female human samurai glad to know money 16 gold pieces door is closed so you kick it which I think is control D it crashes open, there you go, that was easy ah. I'm still in the pit, oh that's annoying you see a pear I'm going to eat the pear <laughs> core dumps so here you go, you can definitely play an ad hack on the console as it was meant to be in the day. Okay, so I'm starting up the Lynx browser connecting to Google. Now it has all these Google cookies it's trying to, trying to download. So this is the, how the Google, Google homepage looks. This is Google homepage? Yeah, it's, yeah. it says Google on the top. Stop with the cookies, Google. <laughs> well, you get an end for never. Let's try one more time. Links, google.com. Okay, See, V. Capital v. Okay, that, like never. Right. He's doing end for never. Says left and right arrows to, to move. I mean up and down to move and right is follow the link. Okay. Yes, now I'm at the search field. So if I go HP 2645. So here we go. HP 2645 terminal. HP Computer Museum. Alright. He's found the right thing. Mm -hmm. There you Are go. These your I'm, yeah, I'm right there. There. there you go. Part one, part two. Yep. And uh, actually, they're both part ones, I think. So, should I click on the link? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what is it going to say? Oh, it might retrieve the text, you think? Well, here we go to YouTube. And it looks like the HP 2645 does not support that video format. Oh, <laughs> that's so bad. It doesn't show the commands. Here's Mark, I'm there. Yeah. That's me. Okay, here's a list of your popular videos. The Tektronix oscilloscope music looks like the top one. Yeah, it is. 729. Alright, cool. And famous divide by zero. <laughs> <laughs> the more stupid you make them, the more <laughs> the more popular they get. Electromagnetic break. I don't think I've seen that one. Oh, well, that that that's that's a total fluke. This is a, a, a piece that I put in R two D two, and I don't know why it's so popular. I think it's electromagnetic something. I, I don't know. So so there you go. My... You now have your twenty six forty five on the web. Great, mm -hmm. thanks. Cool. So while I was experimenting at uh, connecting uh, terminals to other terminals, I thought I should also put this one in. Behold, the smallest terminal HP had made to that date, the Munchkin. There you go. And 
uh, so it has the function key there, tunnel test. Test the ROM, and oh, doesn't that look familiar? It has a test pattern uh, with the, the enhancement, the blinks and the inverse. And to me, that look very much the same as this test pattern with the same enhancement and the same uh, characters at the end. So you can certainly tend there. Yeah. You can certainly tell the lineage, uh, and then you, you can tell also how they had to squish the letters. This is this is minuscule. Uh, it doesn't have the clarity and the contrast of the older one. So let's see if they talk together. They are both HP, or they better do. To type over here, and it appears over there. It did, and vice versa and it's kind of a two extreme the tank the biggest baddest terminal and the uh, the munchkin a little tiny terminal with little tiny characters um you know which one i like better <laughs> this, is, this is a case where older is better i think